Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Let's dive right into Debbie because we've got about another 24 hours before our area sees the worst of it. We've already seen the worst of it in the low country of South Carolina. That's spreading to the Grand Strand this morning and moving up into southeastern North Carolina as I speak. So here's our system. The, the hard part about this system is we've talked about it's slow moving. So people where is it? Where is it? Well, we're not expecting in the Charlotte area, Western Carolina, until really Thursday, Friday. But if you're in the low country of South Carolina, you're like, it's on us. Because here's the track. Um, and I'll just draw it real quickly. We expect the storm to meander out here. Don't get into the specifics of where the, the center is, um, because the center is not where all the activities. But just to give you an idea on where the track is, between now and about Saturday morning, that's all it's going to do. Okay, and that's the center, by the way. And why is that important? Well, the center's down here near Savannah, right? There's the center right there, Savannah, Georgia. The worst weather is way up in here. So where the center is is not as important as where this is. And that's where the problem is. And so as this goes out over water, it could re-strengthen, pull in more moisture, swing back to the west. I'm really tracking where the rain and the worst weather is, not where the center is. So I don't like getting caught up in the track in this kind of thing because... The center's not important. It's important for where it pushes the other stuff, but right now we're tracking where all this heavy rain is. And the concern for everybody watching is these bands. You see these bands? These things are not light rain. These things are producing up to three inches of rain per hour. And what happens because of the slow movement, these bands get stuck over one area for a while. So if we zoom in and I'm gonna pause the loop here, you see all these green outlines? These are flood warnings. All of this area is under flash flood warnings from Savannah to Charleston and new ones. This one right around Myrtle Beach, this is a good, good example of one of these flood warnings. This band is dumping three inches of rain per hour. So you see this considerable flood warning. Um, you don't often see this for, for flood warnings, considerable flooding going on. Um, around Merle's Inlet, Surfside, all these areas. So where this band moves inland, you're eventually going to see this go towards Florence and Darlington and Hartsville, where they're going to see considerable flooding as well. So for the Charlotte area, what we're watching is this band right here shifting back towards the Carolinas. So the updated impacts here, um, this is based on today um, going into the weekend. You see the extreme flood risk is actually pushed a little bit further north and west into the sand hills, this is where we could see 10 to 15 inches of rain. And even in Charlotte, I backed up the, the high risk a little bit closer to us. The mountains, it's not gonna be dry, it's just not we're not expecting flash flooding or heavy rain, but you shouldn't let your guard down because any little shift back to the west could bring additional flooding in that direction. This is my updated, now this is not counting what's already fallen, by the way. <laughs> this is going into the future. So in Charlotte, obviously we haven't got much yet, but this is what's going into the future. 15 inches of rain here on the North South Carolina border. Boy, that looks a lot like Florence Matthew kind of area that was hit hard. So we're gonna have to watch that. Seven to 10 in this big mustard area. But notice our area, you know, people in the Charlotte area and central and Western North Carolina, it's gonna impact us, okay? Now, definitely more to the East than the West, but I-77 is a demarcation that I'm making because if you're on I-77 East, this is going to be significant. You know, you're talking four to seven inches. If you look at this shade here, that's, you know, that's seven inches. That's five inches. That's four inches. That's five. Or excuse me. That's, um, this is six. This is five. Then four. Then three. Then two. So you back it up. And I'll show you some more detail. I don't want to get too specific, but this kind of shows you the gradient of precipitation. So when you see some of these numbers, you're probably going, wow, that's a lot of rain. Let's look at the future cast real quickly. So today through tomorrow morning, just scattered showers. We're really waiting for the system to start pushing in late Wednesday night into early Thursday. So this is Wednesday evening. The bands start to move in. And I really think a lot of this happens while we're sleeping, you know, Thursday morning. Here comes those bands of moisture. And so on Thursday morning, there is one of those bands. And this band right here is going to be dumping up to three inches of rain per hour. So wherever this band sets up, and if it sets up right here, there's gonna be flash flooding, especially in an urban setting like Charlotte. Um, that band kind of sits over us, goes wanes, waxes and wanes a little bit Thursday afternoon. We see the rain try to back up all the way to the mountains. Now, there will be a dry slot. Where does that dry slot go? That's a pocket of dry air on the southeast side of the storm. Um, if that moves in, that could shut off some of the rain, but you see where this heavy rain band is. I mean. I'd love to tell you, I think this is exactly where it's going to be, but this rain band could be anywhere from here, could be in here, could be in here, okay? 
we know it's going to line up somewhere in here. The actual spot is the hard part. We know it's going to be in here. So sometimes people want specifics and specifics aren't always available. The accuracy is that it's going to be somewhere in this area. The actual spot is the hard part. We'll go into Thursday evening. You can see that rain still lingering over us. And hopefully on Friday, it starts to move out. But that might actually, if the band is to our west, pull it back through the area. So there's a lot of moving parts in this system that we're going to have to watch. So the latest timing, I'll move my head up here a little bit out of the way. You can see right now, this is for the Charlotte area. So for folks watching other parts of states, this is Charlotte-centric, this graphic right here. Um, basically, Wednesday evening, we start to see it ramp up, but it's really Thursday morning until, I'd say, Friday afternoon-ish in the red. Now, I don't want to discount the tornado risk because that's on the coast. But in the inland areas, there's not much of a tornado risk. Power outage risk is not zero, but it's low. High winds. Interesting thing about high winds. Let's go to this graphic real quickly. That's just a quick you know, example of, of the forecast specific amounts, if you're curious. But I want to show you the wind speed. So these are the maximum wind gusts expected through Friday. And you can see most of the gusts inland are around 30, maybe 32, 33 max. Okay, that's not crazy. But here's the problem. If you're getting a ton of heavy rain over the ground and you're saturating the soils, 30 mile an hour winds could become an issue. That's why I don't want to totally discount the power outage risk and the high wind risk because overall by themselves, they're not a big deal. But if you combine wet ground and these little bit of winds we're going to get, you could see power outages. So I don't want to say none. It's just not the biggest threat. Wind is not a threat for us. Tornado is not a big risk. Uh, risk. It's really all about the flash flood risk. And that honestly is our biggest impact. So what you need to know, all day Thursday, probably most of Friday, but moving out by Saturday morning, flooding is our big impact and stay aware. I'm a little bit more optimistic for the weekend. I I'm growing, I'm growing a little bit more optimistic that we might see some better weather for the weekend um, as this kind of moves out. But again, that's kind of the impacts we're looking at right now as we go into the weekend. So let's go back. I wanted to show you a couple things, um, you know, future cast wise. One of the things I'm watching is uh, what we call precipital water. Um, and this graphic is, is showing you how much precipital water is in the atmosphere. So what I'm looking at is the deep purples. That Those are off the charts moisture. So any rain under there is going to be sky high. So you notice as we go into Wednesday evening into Thursday, how that moisture tries to pivot back towards the Charlotte area. Definitely uh, Rockingham, Fayetteville to Raleigh, some very heavy rain. And you see it kind of sit there most of Thursday. Thursday is going to be the day if we're going to see massive flooding inland. It's going to be Thursday. And then we'll go into Thursday afternoon. It's still sitting over us. And this stops roughly Thursday evening. The moisture is over. So yeah, Thursday looks bad, but there's also some optimism. Maybe the back edge slides out by Friday. So I'm a little, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to get ahead of myself here, but I'm a little bit more excited that the weekend might pan out being pretty good. But right now, obviously, all eyes are on that rain band as it tries to pivot in here. Again, the tornado risk, as I mentioned, for folks on the coast, there is a tornado risk on the immediate coast. So if you're in these areas right on the coast, these bands are over warm water. There's instability there, and that's where we typically see the tornadoes. What we're not worried about tornadoes is in this area right now. It's not zero, but it's almost no risk at all compared to the flood risk. So stay weather aware the next couple of days. This is going to be a long slog. You have another day in most inland areas, Charlotte, Raleigh, Greensboro, to get ready for this. So mow the lawn, um, get the downspouts, storm drains cleared out. I'm getting a ton of questions about airlines. I'll be honest with you, no clue. No clue. None of this weather would normally shut down an airport or cause delays. But as I've learned, airlines do their own thing. They'll blame it on the weather. Could be computers, could be flight crews, could be scheduling. There's a bazillion things that cause delays. Rarely, if ever, is it weather. Weather just gets blamed for those things. So always check with your airline um, for all of that. Travel purposes. I mean, the coast is where I would stay away from. But inland areas, as long as you don't mind driving in rain, interstates, tend to not flood, side roads do. So if you're traveling on interstates, I would I would be fine. And again, by the weekend, I don't expect any issues. This will be long gone. So we should see better weather by the weekend. Of course, I will post updates throughout the day into the evening. Please stay weather aware, stay safe. We'll get through this together. This is just one of likely several more storms to be impacting us this season.